Statistics and Excel, exponential distribution in seconds, roller coaster line example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left hand side. OneNote presentation 1576 exponential distribution in seconds roller coaster line example tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so you can go into the view tab, use the immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to either read or listen to the trans. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com script in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie in to the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here in prior presentations, we've been thinking about how we can represent different data sets, both numerically using calculations such as the average or mean, the quartiles, the median, and pictorially using the box and whiskers and histogram. The histogram being the primary tool we visualize when thinking about the spread of data, and we can describe the spread of data on a histogram using terms such as it's skewed to the left, it's skewed to the right. We're now looking at uh, functions or formulas that have a smooth curve or a line related to them, which oftentimes can approximate actual data sets in the real world. And if we can approximate our data sets with a line, that would be great because it'll typically give us more predictive power over whatever it is we're looking into. In prior presentations, we looked at families of these uh, types of formulas, these curves, including the uniform distribution, the Poisson distribution, the binomial distribution. Now we're looking at exponential distribution. Now the exponential distribution often has a relationship to the Poisson distribution. So oftentimes we're gonna kind of flip the question around when thinking about a Poisson distribution to the question that we'll be thinking about with an exponential distribution. So oftentimes with a Poisson distribution, just to set the groundwork, we're talking about in business scenarios, line weighting situations where we ask questions such as, what's the likelihood that so many people will be arriving within some interval of time, like one minute or one second, for example. We also had uh, a problem, not over time, but over distance, such as, how many uh how many potholes would show up in a mile of road but we're going to now look at our time example so if we think first about like the poisson and then we'll kind of convert that to the uh exponential for a line waiting situation for like a roller coaster ride for example x is going to be the arrivals during one minute and we're going to say that the mean is going to be uh 3.25 so the 3.25 is the mean arrivals within the time frame distance of one minute. So this is going to be the Poisson distribution, not the exponential. This is just the starting point. If I was to graph this out, 
x is going to be equal to the arrivals during one minute. So what's the likelihood that zero people arrive in one minute? We're going to say that that's going to be the 3.88 according to our Poisson dot dist function, which is going to be taking uh, the x, which is going to be this. It's, we have a, a, a range here, a spill that we're taking. That's why the hashtag is there, comma, the mean 3.25. And then the cumulative, it's not cumulative. That's why it's going to be a zero because we're looking at just the zero. We did that all the way down. What's the likelihood that one person shows up in the one minute time frame? The 12.6. What's the likelihood that two people show up? The 12.48. If I wanted to know the likelihood of having zero to three people show up within the one minute time, I can then say 3.88 plus 12.6 plus 20.48 and so on. So we looked at that in a similar presentation in our prior uh, practice problems. And we can also look at the, the curve would look something like this. So here's our, our Poisson uh, curve. So now we're gonna say, okay, well now we wanna ask a different question and say the minutes between arrivals. So now we're getting to our exponential distribution. So now we're saying, all right, well, if there's gonna be a, a mean of 3.25 people arriving within a one minute time period, what's, the, what's gonna be the mean minutes between arrivals? So see how we kind of flipped it on its head? We're looking at the minutes between arrivals. Well, that means we can take the, the, uh, the 3.25 divided by one hold on other way around <laughs> one divided by one minute divided by the 3.25 and that gives us about our 0.30769 uh, so there's about 0.3 minutes between arrivals all right so now we have the question okay so that that makes sense do i want to be talking about this in terms of minutes or do we want to be talking about it in terms of seconds? Remember, whenever we're looking at time, it gets a little bit confusing because we're base 60 in time. So we got to be thinking, okay, uh, do I want to do I want to convert this into seconds and be talking about seconds, or do we want to be talking about minutes? In this case, we'll convert it to seconds. So the mean second arrivals. So we're going to say, all right, I'll take that number times 60, 60 seconds in a minute that's going to give us the 18.46 so now we're looking at this in terms of seconds it takes about 18.4 second seconds between arrivals all right so then we can look at the uh, x now being for our exponential distribution seconds between arrivals as opposed to the x for our poisson distribution being the arrivals during a one minute period so now we're gonna, we can ask questions like okay well what if x was less than or equal to 60 60 being seconds so that being one minute we can use then our expone.dist function which looks a lot like the poisson.dist function x now being the 60 in this case and then lambda is going to be one over this 18.46 the the mean uh the the mean seconds between arrivals and then comma the cumulative versus non-cumulative in this case we want it to be cumulative because i'm adding everything up the probability between zero up to and including the 60. Uh, okay so we have that now we can also uh plot this out so if i have this this is these are giving us my rows and my rows for the exponential remember when i plotted this one out over here this this rows function i could just make this zero one two and then copy down uh, the the rows or i could use a sequence and if you use a sequence then that's why these two numbers are here because that gives you a little bit more control to change the numbers that you want in the sequence so for the exponent.dist we used 120. so if i go over here and do a similar thing now with the exponent.dist x now equaling the seconds between arrivals we can then use our expone.dist uh, function which is going to be expone.dist x is going to be in this case the zero but we copied it all the way down that's what the hashtag is for so it's going to spill it's going to be a spill array comma one over uh over this for the lambda and then 
then the cumulative this time zero or not cumulative so it's not cumulative so then we have the seconds between arrivals what's the likelihood of zero 5.42 seconds what's the likelihood of uh of one second between arrivals 5.13 two seconds between arrivals 4.86 three seconds 4.60 and so on and so forth so if we were to plot this out then it would look something like this so now we have it this is the characteristic you know look of of uh, an exponential type distribution and sometimes i feel like the line weighting is a little less intuitive to fully understand we'll take a look at an example next time the the example of like a radioactive decay declining for some reason that gives me an image uh, which is another exponential distribution uh situation oftentimes in, in another realm of like science and whatnot but uh but that usually draws gives me the picture of, of this but the thing to keep in mind is that if you have a poisson distribution and you flip the question around then you should get generally this uh this exponential and which will give you a characteristic curve that looks like this now in future problems this is just another look of the curve so you can get a fancy fancy curves within uh excel so we'll practice formatting those curves in excel if you want to work through the practice problem in uh excel so so uh we'll t and and so we'll also take a look, look at another practice problem to try to get a better intuitive sense as to why in these line weighting situations would this happen because because it doesn't it's, sometimes it doesn't make complete intuitive sense you know at first uh so we'll we'll try to we'll try to break that out a little bit more in a future presentation and we'll also take a look at it in terms of minutes and instead of in terms of seconds to get a feel for the minutes versus the seconds the other thing to keep in mind is that if you were to ask a question such as what's the likelihood that you're going to get uh that that you have zero up to two you would think that you can you can just sum up the the percents but i don't believe you can, it may not be exact to do that in the expone.dist uh situation as easily as you could have done it with the poisson situation possibly because of the curve of the exponential distribution possibly needing more complex math in order to do that so therefore like calculus right so therefore what you would need to do then uh is use if you're asking that question you would need to use the cumulative function so so in other words if i use the cumulative function to ask the question of the likelihood of zero to three i may get a different answer than if i just summed up these four numbers possibly due to the curvature of the exponential curve